just over Skyrim, but now I'm gonna be hopping over. I mean, that, say that back. Just over Paragon, I'm gonna be hopping on the Skyrim. I know I've had a lot of people ask me questions um, about how do you make coin in the game, and the game is fairly complex compared to a lot of the other games that you may or may not have played. It's pretty straightforward in RPG terms. You do an action, the more you do the action, or the higher skill that action is in a skill, it levels that respective skill. You guys can see I'm already at level 34. I haven't really had too, too much time embedded in the game. I've been dividing my time up between this and Paragon, and also work, so it's, it's kind of been a, a lot of downtime for this game. But I'm gonna show you guys some of my easy tips and tricks for money making. You can see I've, I've gotten a decent bit of gear at this point. I'm not completely new out anymore. Um, and there's several ways and different skills you can go through to get cash. Um, you guys already have seen me using the Grey Winter Watch Cave, um, well, loop or, or run around method to quickly train a lot of skills. But one of the skills I would recommend you invest in first, and one of the abilities I recommend you get first is under the Conjuration skill tree, and it's gonna play a part in you leveling up everything else. Even if you don't really want to be a, a conjurer or worry about summoning familiars or anything like that, you wanna do this. Novice Conjuration, cuts the doors, cast Novice Level Conjuration spells in half, cuts the cost of it. Okay, Mystic Binding, bound weapons do more damage, which is pretty cool because you're gonna be using them a good bit, and then Soul Stealer, bound weapons cast Soul Trap on targets, which is beautiful. It doesn't consume any actual Soul Gems. And I want to explain to you guys what Soul Gems are as well. Um, it's going to fill a Soul Gem every time you get a kill. So let's go over to Enchanting. You can see my Enchanting skill is one of my highest is at 60. And I've already got my Enchanting up to 2. My new enchantments are 40% stronger. Now, the reason I'm... I'm Linking these two skills together as a money making method is quite simple. Um, the conjuration skill, soul trap, that comes now for me inside of my. Let's see if I can show it to you guys. It's a magic skill on the conjuration. You can buy it from. Back out. I'm in Riften. Uh, in White Run. Literally the second major city, the first major city you visit, and the second overall town you go into inside of White Run. You can go, this is Dragon Reach, which is inside of White Run. Okay, so looking right here at Dragon's Reach. You go inside of there, there's going to be a guy all the way to the back to the right. I can't remember his name off the top of my head, but he's like wearing Mage's gowns. You're going to walk up to the stairs right in front of the yard and take a right into the room to the right. There's going to be an enchanting table and an alchemy table and a guy in there wearing robes. You talk to him and you can purchase Grow back. this skill right here, Bound. Well, bound sword you don't have to buy a bomb battle axe but bound sword um and it, it's quite simple it, it's you yeah the reason i say purchase this is because both it, it both affects your ability to soul trap which is bound weapons which now cast soul trap on enemies so if you have soul gems which i'll get over to showing you guys how those work and operate in a second if you have soul gems it will fill them once you have that conjuration perk maybe maybe you're wondering okay how can I go about leveling my conjuration? Um, or my conjuration is pretty low. I don't have it high enough for, what's this? What are you saying? You don't have, uh, you don't have it high. You don't have it at 30 yet. And it is a really, really easy method to get it at 30, which involves Miss these same swords I was just showing you guys, which is, you can actually go to the cave, the gray, um, Limp. Grey Winter Watch Cave, which is located right here. Now, you're going to have to run to it your first time, which is a little, you can see it's pretty close to White Run. A little ways off. Grey Winter Watch Cave. And the reason I say go here is, is there's two trolls in there. They're pretty hard to kill, even at, at, at like level 15 to 20s, when you can start to like see yourself possibly killing them if you really try it. You don't want to kill them. You want them alive. The more enemies around, the better when you try to summon these swords. And you're just going to, let's see, I can actually take you guys into a Grey Winter Watch. <laughs> now it's gonna level my skills a lot slower than it would yours because I'm at level 60 already. Yeah, dragon Mask. Legend holds the highest ranking dragon priest for granted magical mass, string artifact that defy the laws of time and grant their whereas powerful enchantments. Cool. Okay. Now I've gotten that out of the way. I always try to pick up on the lower. I'm fully aware of the dragon mask, but that's more for you guys than me. Now you can see right there. That's like that's uh blah blah blah. That's white run right there. And that's Dragon's Reach. Looking at it. That's Dragon's Reach. So you're not that far off. You can see it's literally basically right across the road from us. 
So what you want to do is you want to come over here, frame and watch. You're going to enter. You can use this to level up sneak as well. But like literally just playing around in the doorway. What I want to do is conjuration. I have the battle axe equipped. I'm going to do these two swords. Okay. I'm going to sneak right in here. He's probably going to notice me. We'll just fit perfectly fine. Pretty much every time you come into combat with also making sure that you have these guys soul gems not you know not necessarily black soul gems when you get a low level you're not going to be fighting a lot of enemies that require black black soul gems work on humans if i remember correctly they capture the human souls um you have common soul gems you have grand soul gems greater soul gems lesser soul gems and at the very bottom of the power scale petty soul gems and as long as you have the lower tiered ones, they won't go into your better soul gems. So, keep plenty of petty soul gems. They're going to cost you a sizable amount of money at first, but they're going to make you a lot of money in the long run. So, definitely make sure you have these on you. And as you fill them, you can travel to Dragon's Reach. Yes. Now, once you've visited this place, you have it unlocked. You may have to travel there first, which is fine. But you're not going to be able to start doing this immediately. But this is going to be like White Run is the central hub of this entire area. It's where you're going to be doing most of your trading, spending a lot of your time. So you can do this method here to both level up your conjuration, which will in turn give you character level. You're the one cast um, those illusions. Impressive. <laughs> My cousin's out fighting dragons, and what do I get? God. Lord Doobie. Yeah. I've definitely got to download that mod. I want to get some of the trophies in this game first, but uh, maybe late. It's 11 p.m. All right. They're not there. Okay, but he'll be right here. Uh, I try not to steal stuff like that in White Run. I usually go to Rifton to do all my stuff. It keeps my, keeps my notoriety down here so I can stay pretty bother free or worry free while I'm here. Go over the Arcane Enchanter item. Now, of course, I'm not going to cast it on my pickaxe, but just to show the value difference. This pickaxe is worth five. All right. And the best, once you've learned these enchantments, uh, it may take you a while. Of course, you're probably not going to have to. You're probably going to get, like, absorb health, absorb manager, fi fire damage, insufficient charge. Yes, yes, I understand. I don't have a soldier in that charge with me. God, I wish I could have showed you guys exactly how much. But when you cast an enchantment such as soul trap or paralyze, I think paralyze is the best one. Then it's absorb health for me so far. So if you have, once you have the paralyzed enchantment, definitely go that route. If you don't, go absorb, and then down from there, I think it's absorb mana. But getting these enchantments on there will turn like a five value item into a 680 value item, which you won't get that much cash for when you go to sell it, but you will get like a large percentage of that, which will also in turn level up your speechcraft. So you come over here to speechcraft. You can see I have a couple of points in it already. I think I'm actually going to have one point in it, but I'm wearing a necklace that boosted. Buying and selling prices are 10% better. Of course, I can get it up as high as, what is it, an extra five? It's 10 plus another 20%, so 30% better out of this skill, plus the lower. Uh, you can sell any item of any kind to any merchant. You can invest 500 gold. He can increase his battle gold permanently. You can barter stolen goods. Every merchant in the world gains a thousand gold for barter. Okay, so the ones you want to invest in would definitely be this one, and this one as far as making your money is worth, 10% best prices, 
and eventually you're gonna get up to the point where you need these and these and then finally master trader because they're not gonna have enough gold to buy the items you're selling them and I mean it even turns anything like a simple iron sword that you use that you smith yourself or random items that you pick up like simple junk or garbage items that you normally just toss aside weapons <laughs> no notice I'm saying weapons don't don't worry much about armor armor enchantments at least the ones I have right now armor enchantments aren't paying me that well so I do weapons and weapon enchantments and I pick up like garbage weapons that don't weigh much carry them back what is it and after the end of all that fighting that I've been through thanks through thanks to me having the bound swords with the soul steel ability on it that I explained to you guys early I'll have filled up a ton of you guessed it soul gems so gems are full I can go in there and enchant sell the items make a ton of cash you can see right now I'm already at 7100 gold after I bought my house um, and next up is you can see I have a lot of potions a pretty sizable amount of potions at this point I actually probably should get rid of some of those they're weighing me down also got lucky and got an amulet of Dibella which plus 15 speechcraft is a large increase in the percentage amount of coin that I get per item when I go to sell to a trader so I tend to leave it on just in case so I don't forget it also have Elven Ball Crippling which I got through my smithing skill which luckily I got all of my skill points thanks to me leveling simultaneously my conjuration skill which we went through my enchanting skill which made me cash which then I got to put cash into my smithing skill which got me up to 40 and I am almost at the point where I can do advanced armors so that's pretty straightforward and easy on how to get money now at that troll place you can train a lot of other skills outside of just conjuration you can level up your heavy armor, you can level up your block, you can level your two-handed, your one-handed, your archery. It takes a while for you to kill these guys and they regenerate health really fast. So a tip and a trick uh, that you can do there is like go into the cave, use up all your mana, uh, use up all your magicka, and then run back out and then simply wait one hour and your magic will be it will have refilled. And you run back in, do it again, and you repeat like rinse repeat this process over and over. Your character get power level, you end up really strong. And then you're gonna end up needing items, which at the time being, I wasn't getting any drops because of what I was doing. I wasn't making any coin, but I was making my coin through that skill. Now, in the amount of time and my the, cousin's the out fighting that I was, dragons I was actually and running do around, get? killing, doing some of the side missions, I was picking up a lot of ingredients and a lot of reagents. And you guys can see that my potions, I'm really getting. Get some decent values on these 484 on invisibility potions and there's a lot of ingredients of those that are readily available there's actually an app on android phones and ios for you to be able to check out all of the ingredients that go into these guys and 303 for a simple potion i think i may have had like 30 30 or 40 gold worth of items put into it and i'm probably going to sell this potion for something like 200 gold now there's other skills that you can easily power level to get skill points so you can make stronger potions. You guys can see that I actually, at this point, have, I want to say I have two points into, one or two points into my alchemy skill. Two points into my alchemy skill. And the way I fed that is by simply getting cast, cast novice level losing spells for half magicka. Okay. Magic. Go over to my illusion. And you want to take courage and put it on both your left and your right hand. You're ready to cast it. She does not move at all. I don't know why. And you can see that it's slowly leveling me up at 68. And it's a, a pretty cheap spell. So once again, use that weight technique. It's not going to go anywhere. Wait again. It's faster to wait that hour than it is for you to wait for Let's see have armor that adds a ton of magicka. It's not really worth stressing over. Seema magic comes back pretty quickly, but that's more for combat situations than this. You can see I got an easy illusion level and I'm almost I'm, I'm pretty close to 70 if I wanted to, I could power level it there. But you don't want to increase your level too much without adding beneficial things to your account. I've definitely made a lot of gold from this process. 
I'm trying to think of anything else that would factor into it. Also, increasing your smithing. I would, I would strongly recommend using the funds that you made to increase your smithing. Definitely increase your smithing uh, so you can make better weapons and upgrade them further. I think at this point, I am at somewhere in the 40s. My damage isn't crazy high, but I have some points into my one-handed skill and my two-handed skill because I, I want to kind of try to level up a little bit of everything on here so I'm, I'm not stuck with one playstyle. I think next up will probably be going to my bows. Pickpocket hasn't gotten much love, haven't had much opportunities for lock picking, but my sneak is definitely getting there. Backstab sneak attack for one-handed weapons do six times the damage. Now notice, I have my stealth with 20% harder to detect while sneaking, and I also, so six times the extra, six times the extra damage, and one-handed weapons do 40% more damage over their base damage anyway. I don't think I have any one-handed weapons actually equipped on me right now, but I believe they're doing 31 damage per swing and 41 on my elven great sword which i'm getting ready to start training so i can kind of go through and show you guys uh, find somewhere i can go to next start killing the enemies capture some souls and show you guys the easy process to start your money making off with this soul soul grabbing deal and then you use that to fund your um potions and eventually your potions will start to fund fund themselves and make you coin as well so not only am i making money off of my enchanting, I'm what making is money off of my potions, and if you're looking for a way to level your sneak like my character is, this is a fairly easy place to come here in white run at nighttime, just down from the Dragon's Reach, and just follow this guy around, and he'll ignore you, and get back behind him, is there someone else that can see me, he damn well shouldn't be able to, there's someone here, just standing here. Ah, there you go. Now it's him going for the sneak behind him. And the longer you do this, and the faster you move, the more movement you do while you're sneaking, the higher your skill gets. The higher your skill gets, the less likely you are to get discovered. So another easy way to power level. Now of course for me, with me having my sneak relatively high, it takes me a lot longer. And the sneak attacks at this point are where most of my levels come from. You can see I've made a significant dent in it without having to be in combat. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. And like I said, I practice all my pickpocketing and lock picking and rifting because that's the thieves area of the map and it's a lot easier to ride the guard. I mostly deal with petty thievery chocolate frogs. It's too long since you've been a good thing. Now, now we got that out of the way. You guys who are trying to figure out how to do a stealth build, you're looking for a way to train stealth really quickly. I'm trying to find somewhere. At Riften, now if you guys haven't been to Riften yet, or you haven't been to a lot of these cities yet, and you're looking for a way to get there, and you're like, oh, well, I'm not strong enough to make it here, or to make it to Solitude, or to make it to Dawn, Dawnstar, or anything like that, you come right out here to the Whiterun Stable, and literally, there's gonna be a guy there with a horse and carriage, you can hop in it for like 50 to 20 gold, which is dirt cheap at this point. You can pay him to take you to any of these major cities, Rorkstead, or uh, pay him to take you to Felcreed, you pay him to take you to Mark Ford, every one of these cities and take you there. And that way you have him unlocked his fast travel with Winterhold, Windhelm. You can pay him and he'll part you there just like Riften. You can go to Riften and practice your pickpocketing. And this is for the guys who aren't really looking to use, um, not to say cheap, but like uh, shortcuts in the game. And they actually want to enjoy leveling up their characters and knowing that they kind of made it on their own and that they made it from nothing on here because that's like one of the best parts of these RPG games. You literally start off on equal grounds with everyone. You're not that strong, you're not that powerful, you're not that rich, but you make it there anyway. Uh, there's more of that flare. Let's see the route. Oh yeah, I can go here. Fast travel the reward. Actually, this is a 20 minute vid. I think I'm going to cut it off at no more than 30. So hopefully by then I've killed an enemy with one of my soul gems. I mean one of my um soulbound swords or soulbound battle axes so you guys can see how easy it is to fill these soul gems to turn around and turn something that's worth 10 gold into 600 gold even though if you look at the value of a petty soul gem it's only worth 10 gold it's dirt cheap I mean you might buy it for 50 or 40 or something like that I think it's 20 to buy it from a merchant with no no skills at all no perks but you spent 20 gold on that you got a sword for free by killing someone or you made a sword so you leveled up your smithing a little bit. 
but the sword isn't worth as much as the bar. You put that soul gem into that, and now it's worth far more than the bar. It's worth more than the ingredients. That's what you try to do in this game. You try to more than break even so you can make coin. And it's literally gotten to the point for me that my only issue is actually the salesmen don't have enough gold to keep up with what I need, or I end up having to jump city to city because they don't have everything I need. I can, I can sell these two right now for even more gold, but I'm going to keep those just in case I need to slow an enemy. So actually some of these potions I'm making are useful uh, for if I help. Increase health by 40, 60 seconds, restore 50 points of health. So, an uh, overheal effectively. Uh, fortify smithing, weapon and armor improvement is 42% better. Definitely worth it. You definitely want to invest in the skill because you're not going to get to hitting as hard as you can or having as much armor as the armor cat, which is like 500 something without the smithing skill. It's like pretty well impossible. Sleeping giant ends. This is the next step of this last quest I did. I'm going to go ahead and finish that out. Hopefully, I can get into some combat somewhere with some kind of enemies uh, within the next couple minutes to show you guys how easy it is to soul trap. I don't owe you money, do I? You're that visitor been poking around. Attic room, eh? Well, we don't have an attic room. But you can have the one on the left. Make yourself at home. I don't even realize that. So you're the Dragonborn I've been hearing so much about. I think you're looking for this. We need to talk. Follow me. I'm not mistaken, I thought I actually get some decent weapons from her. It's like I said, it's been a while since I've been on Skyrim, but it didn't take me long to get back in the swing of things. Right now I'm going light armor, I'm wearing full elven armor and it gives me a pretty sizable amount of armor. I'm sitting at 141 armor weight, oh, uh, armor rating, without too much into the skills, either smithing or armor. Close the door. Now we can talk. Gotta love the secret door. It's like one of those two dungeon houses. Hey. Weird like that. The Greybeards seem to think you're the Dragonborn. I hope they're right. Oh, uh, she has a lot of potions in here. I'm gonna snag all of those. Surprised? I guess I'm getting pretty good at my harmless innkeeper act. You can't be too careful. Thalmor spies are everywhere. I didn't go to all this trouble on a whim. I needed to make sure it wasn't a Thalmor trap. I am not your enemy. I already gave you the horn. I'm actually trying to help you. I just need you to hear me out. Okay, shut up. Deep calm. Like I said in my note, I've heard that you might be Dragonborn. I'm part of a group that's been looking for you. Well, someone like you for a very long time. If you really are Dragonborn, that is. Before I tell you any more, I need to make sure I can trust you. I knew the Greybeards would send you there if they thought you were Dragonborn. They're nothing if not predictable. When you showed up here, I knew you were the one the Greybeards sent and not some Thalmor plant. We remember what most don't, that the Dragonborn is the ultimate dragon slayer. You're the only one that can kill a dragon permanently by devouring its soul. Can you do it? Can you devour a dragon's soul? Good, and you'll have a chance to prove it to me soon enough. Mm. We remember what most don't, that the Dragonborn is the ultimate Dragon Slayer. You're the only one that can kill a dragon permanently by devouring its soul. Yes, we're very old enemies. 
And if my suspicions are correct, they might have something to do with the dragons returning. But that isn't important right now. What is important is that you might be dragonborn. Dragons aren't just coming back. They're coming back to life. They weren't gone somewhere for all these years. They were dead, killed off centuries ago by my predecessors. Now something's happening to bring them back to life, and I need you to help me stop oh. it. You know how crazy it is. I know they are. I visited their ancient burial mounds and found them empty, and I figured out where the next one will come back to life. We're going to go there, and you're going to kill that dragon. If we succeed, I'll tell you anything you want to know. Kynes Grove. There's an ancient dragon burial near there. If we can get there before it happens, maybe we'll learn how to stop it. I can't wait around for you to make up your mind. I'll meet you at Kynes Grove. Don't waste time getting there. Yeah. I gotta drop a lot of this weight I got on me. Do you need something? Let's get going. That's better. Let's get on the road to Kynes Grove. Oh, boy, I swear to see. Cool. Definitely take that. Tons of cotton. Clover. Ordnar, I'm traveling. You've got the inn till I get back. Right. Happy trails. I really don't want the steel dagger, but okay. Because I can use that for my intent later. You guys saw that thing was worth next to nothing. Take steel sword. Take the blade sword. Haven't had one of those in ages. Sure, why not? So it's just. Yeah. And both will be pretty useless to me. Okay, let's. Nah. What this crap that I'm carrying is actually. Why not? She don't need that. She can't spend it on anything. She's an NPC. Kynes Grove is this way. We can travel together or split up and meet there. Your choice. Items. Miscellaneous. Carrying a lot of weight just on this map. That's fast travel. Zoom out. Definitely want to recommend you guys get a house as soon as possible. Like the first chance you get 5,000 gold after killing that dragon, buy the house. Upgrade it, put storage and upgrade it. Make sure you have like everything in it. Especially for the easy alchemy. I keep all of my alchemy. Uh, can't eat my words. I keep all of my alchemy gear inside of the chest at my house. Is how I store all of the excess weight I have. Same thing for dragon bones. They're really heavy. And you will not be able Trouble to. Trouble in white running, I'll pull you into the dragon's reach. No, <laughs> sure, you can hold me anywhere if you want to. Oh, coming up on the 30 minute mark. Hope I can capture the soul. Alright, so you just bought the house five grand, spent like another grand or so getting it. Getting it all. Alright, get it together. Got a couple dragon bones in there already. That, fighting the dragon, he made fire. Cure disease, destruction, plus five block. So that's now health I can keep you. So my invisibility keep the miner. Wonderful magic to catch fire. I think I can hang on to that. Restore stamina, stamina, strength. Shot again. A little bit of weight coming in there. Not much. Look. Why is he in my miscellaneous? What am I carrying? That's so damn heavy. Left the soul gym. Fire moonstone. Six kill ingots. That up. Oh my god, look at that leather. Yeah, that can definitely get put up. That's where my weight was. Also, 
Let's go to the Blade Store. I'm not ready to do anything with that just yet. Pickaxe is good. Come with me. Steel dagger. I, I can deal with it. Like I said, upgrade the house, and you can get an alchemy table right here in your house. And I keep my potion gear. Oh, come on. Find a task, genius. Find a task. Keep my alchemy gear stashed in here. Necklace of alchemy, amulet of uh, necklace of alchemy, scale helmet of eminent alchemy, high braces of major alchemy. So gives me a pretty significant boost. I think it's like 40%, 45-ish, somewhere in that range percent of increase to my potion strength, which is almost a 50% increase, which is also an increase in value. What are you sending me to again? I like the look of heavy armor, but it benefits just don't outweigh light armor enough to just that change of movement speed and everything. Is that dragon stone? into the cave entrance that's not where you're trying to head to. That was definitely a dragon I heard of. Items. Stealth is a wonderful thing. Weapons. Need to travel over. Magic. Just for show.
right now to grow about.
kill. And I way over the top of the dynamo. I think up to this point, I've pretty much shown everything from the soul capture to the wares and the hows and what you do to, uh, to get your character easy coin. That much kind of, of course, you don't have to go through fighting dragons like this. Dragons aren't even valuable until you can actually sniff their bones into something, honestly. <coughs> so, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and end the stream here. I think I might put my new word to follow. I guess I'm gonna show that. Now. But, I'm gonna go ahead and finish in here. Hope you guys enjoy. Definitely hope I help you guys out for anything that's more important. You've been enjoying the video. It's already lasting 47 minutes. But on this note, I'm gonna be gaining the word of follow. Whatever it is, you guys can learn that too. Word of follow, learn. Follow, follow, follow. So, if you wanna get far, you can come here. And that's pretty much it for this stream, you guys. Hope y'all enjoy it.